Tom Smith, a Swampscott native, was one of the chosen few that had an athletic gift and was dedicated enough to see his professional dreams become reality. I've been playing hockey since I've been, you know, since I could walk. My dad actually put me on a crate and actually pushed me around um, before I could walk. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I knew nothing else. I always wanted to be a hockey player. The level that I played at is the, uh, the level down from professional. It's the highest level you can go before college. Mm -hmm. And the, the team that I played for, um, my coach won a national title at RPI and then won two Stanley Cups with the Detroit Red Wings and started our program and has fed a lot of kids straight from our program to Detroit. He seemed to have everything in order and was on his way to a Division I school for hockey until one play in one game that changed everything he had ever worked towards. My first accident happened when I was 19. Um, it was August 2nd of 2008. I was in my second tournament with the team that I signed with, the Boston Bulldogs, and I was skating down on a kid who was going down on a breakaway. And I caught up to him at the last second, and um, he was in mid shot, and the goalie came out to poke check him. And I went to jump over the goalie to avoid a collision. My skates hit his helmet. Tom was internally decapitated and received breaks to the C1, C2, C5, and C6 parts of his spine. My back muscles held my head from shifting over. In Boston, medical professionals had told Tom he would spend the remainder of his life in a wheelchair. But Tom wasn't giving up so quickly. He flew down to Miami to get involved in the Miami Project to Cure Paralysis. The doctors on the Miami Project gave Tom the encouraging attitude that has stuck with him to this day. They, you know, always were optimistic that I was going to walk again. And that's what I needed. You know, doctors up here, I couldn't have been more disappointed in. And down there, it was like, you know, the doctor made me bring my skates down. And he said, mm -hmm. if I don't get you back on skates, I'm not doing my job. Intense therapy had Tom back on skates in February of 2009 and up to speed for contact sports July of that same year. Tom, who's been told he's a walking miracle, quickly regained his focus on pursuing his hockey dreams, but never forgot about the people who had helped change his life so drastically. I feel like, you know, when people have an injury or overcome an obstacle and the people who help them often get left behind, and I didn't want to do that. After his injury, Tom founded his own philanthropy, Thomas E. Smith Fight to Cure Paralysis. During a comedy show fundraiser in August of 2009, he raised $3,200 for his cause. You know, I rebounded from my first injury, and I was still getting college offers. But my first college offer was in August of 07, um, and Yale offered me a three for four year deal. And their, their plan was, they said, you can sign with us in the fall of 08 if you play one year of junior hockey. Tom never made it through one year of junior hockey. Just as he thought he had gotten his normal life back, everything came to a startling halt once again. I went around the net with a player, and our skates got caught up. And instead of, you know, going in feet first, like I've done a thousand times, I was taking a turn. And my skates got caught in his skates and I caught an edge in the ice so my feet stopped but my um, upper body kept going and my head hit, hit the four inch lip on the boards to separate the glass from the boards and I broke uh, T3 and T4 in my back. Tom is currently taping his recovery this time around to track progress. The, the first one was in the cervical part mm -hmm. of your spine which is near your neck. My second injury is in between my shoulder blades. So the count starts over one, two, three, four in the T part. So the doctor said, he goes, if I was the doctors in Miami, I would have signed off on you. If I was you, I would have played again. He said, you had nothing to worry about. This is just sure unluckiness. Spinal cord injuries in young athletes are becoming more and more prevalent. Tom was 19 when his first accident happened, the average age in which most spinal cord injuries occur in the United States. Tom blames feeling invisible at the high level of hockey he was playing for the reason he ended up getting hurt and believes this is the case for many young athletes who end up in the same situation. Oh, you think you're invisible. I mean, I signed 
a contract with, I mean, uh, USA Hockey ranked my team the most prestigious and most winning junior A program in the country. Mm -hmm. I thought it was invisible. I mean, I played hockey uh, with a sort of reckless abandonness. Mm -hmm. I mean, no one stopped me. I was faster than everybody. I wasn't a finesse guy. Like, I didn't really use my stick handling to to get me around guys, it was my speed. Mm -hmm. And either guys are gifted with their hands or they have speed, and I had speed, so. Um, I do think that contributed to it, but that was me. I wasn't gonna change it. Against a 0.9% chance of fully recovering, Tom's incredible spirit and encouraging attitude make it hard not to believe he will recover again. You know, they told me last time, like I said, I was never gonna walk again, mm -hmm. so. The doctor said he's not going to bet against me, but he's not going to guarantee anything. So, you know, until they tell me that I'm not going to walk, I'm going to keep going. Not only does Tom keep himself occupied by going into Boston every day for intense therapy, he is also continuing his efforts fundraising for a Thomas E. Smith fight to cure paralysis and is in the process of writing his first book. I believe that you need something, whether it's someone or something, mm -hmm. to help you get through. Um, an injury, whether it's, you know, writing, reading, um, you know, a favorite, I don't know. What's your thing? I, I do a lot of writing, that helps me, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, since this injury, um, a teacher from my school contacted um, an editor from New York that wants to do a book on me, so for my last injury, I have um, um, about 40 pages typed up already that I was gonna put in, but now we have a few more chapters to add, so. His amazing outlook on the course of events in his life leaves many wondering if they could ever be so strong. Tom credits his ability to stay so optimistic to his large support system. You know, you sit there and it's all it's a lonely, depressing time. And I, I mean, I was blessed because I had family and friends coming in all the time and my teammates and the general manager for my team, the owner of my team, um, you know, players from different teams um, coming in and helping me through this, but a lot of people don't. Tom understands that many people with life-altering injuries aren't as lucky as he is to have such support. He recently spoke to therapy students at Northeastern University in Boston about the importance of helping their patients deal with their injury mentally, not just physically an aspect he feels is often overlooked. Tom has already gone through more than most of us will ever go through in our lifetime. His junior league coach, Mike Adesa, has been quoted saying Tom might be the most courageous individual he has ever met. When asked if he has any regrets in life, Tom gives an answer many of us in his situation might not be strong enough to say. I've beaten the odds. I believe I'm gonna beat it again and you know, the people that I've touched and the people that I've helped from this injury has helped me become, you know, a better person. So, I have no regrets. Reporting from Swampscott, I'm Michelle Nigro.